and welcome to Open House. My name is Tyler Warner, and I'm the Director of Government Affairs with the Dayton Area Board of Realtors. And today's guest, we have Montgomery County Auditor Carl Keith. Auditor Keith, thank you for being with us Thank today. you for having me. I appreciate it. Great. So I wanted to start off this interview and just ask you, what is the day-to-day -day of the county auditor? Well, as county auditor, I wear a lot of different hats. And uh, so uh, I'm the county's chief fiscal officer responsible for uh, keeping the county's financial records, paying the county's bills. I'm the chief paymaster for the county. Uh, I'm the sealer of weights and measures that show any commercial weighing and measuring device uh, we're responsible for inspecting and ensuring that they, they work properly. Uh, chief administrator of the data processing board um, and uh, deputy registrar for the Bureau of Motor Vehicles. I also sell dog tags, so it's a wide range of responsibilities, uh, but I also serve as the county's chief assessor. Uh, so that's a, one of the uh, responsibilities that touches people, uh, touches just about everybody in the county at some, in some one, one uh, fashion or another. Mm -hmm. And so with that, as you wear many hats, um, one, one thing that has happened recently is the triennial update. Yes. Give us an ex can you explain what that is and then what goes into the triennial update? Sure. Uh, so as the chief assessor, you know, one of my responsibility is to determine the, the value of property for, for taxing purposes. And uh, under Ohio law, we're required to, every county is required to do a comprehensive revaluation of property uh, once every six years. And then midway through that six-year uh, cycle, we're responsible to do a market update. So the last revaluation in Montgomery County was in 2014. Uh, so in 2017, this is our triennial update year. And this is a market update. So during a revaluation, we send uh, data collectors into the field. Uh, we update our uh, photo photographs of every property in the county. We do a visual inspection of every property in the county, uh, update our property uh, characteristics uh, where necessary. Uh, but with, a, with an update like we're doing this year, uh, we don't do that. We don't send anybody in the field. We, we haven't updated property values, we've, uh, property characteristics. Uh, we've just uh, looked at the market, the real estate market, uh, sales over the past three years, and adjust values based upon the based upon those sales activity. Okay, and w what would this do? I believe a common uh, perception of this is that it's going to change one's tax property taxes. Can you speak to that and how that affects the the property taxes in the area? Well, there's it has some impact. It's certainly the the value of your your property affects your tax bill. That's what's the basis of of the the tax bill. Uh, you know, it's, it, start, it starts out with a simple formula, tax times uh, rate times value equals tax. Uh, so the rate is a, is a big factor and then the value is a big factor. Uh, but when we do an update like this, there are, there are uh, mechanisms in place that uh, keep a person's tax bill from rising dramatically based upon changes in value and, and keeps it from uh, the revenues from decreasing dramatically if we, if we have a decrease in value. So really a, a, an update like this has a very minimal impact on someone's tax bill. It affects about 10% of the bill. Uh, what this what that really does is set the tax base for the future. So in the future of any school district or the county or library district, whatever, would like to place a levy on the ballot, these new values would be what they would use to compute uh, what kind of revenues those would generate. So it's really setting the tax base for the future. Okay. And what trends are you seeing throughout the county you know, in terms of property values? Well, this year is a big turnaround. Uh, we, uh, after the Great Recession and the housing crisis of, of 2008, uh, the sales of the real estate market took a pretty drastic uh, uh, drop in values, and we saw a big decline in values throughout the county. Uh, over a, uh, since 2008, we saw the county lose about 12 percent of its property value. Uh, that equates to about three and a half billion dollars in lost value. Uh, and so in, we, in 2011, we saw a 7% decline in value. In 2014, a 4% decline in value. Those were historic numbers. We hadn't seen declines in value like that uh, since the Great Depression in the 1930s. So, so that was pretty historic. Uh, so this year, we're seeing a, a turnaround. Um, the, the market is rebounding. Uh, the real estate market is hot. Uh, the number of sales activity throughout the county has increased dramatically over the past three years. So we're looking at an overall uh, increase in value in the county of about 4.5%. It's not a big number, uh, but it's, it's a big number when you compare it to three years ago, we were down 4 and now we're up 4.5%. So up 4.5% total, uh, residential values up a little over 6%. Uh, so those are a big turnaround and good news for the community. 
And when you say the market's improving, what plays into that? Uh, the number of sales, uh, the, I think uh, you know, certainly your, uh, uh, the Board of Realtors, some of the stats that I've seen put out, the, you know, there's uh, the, the, the inventory is, is low and so it's driving prices up um, and at certain parts of the county it's, it's been more dramatic than others. Uh, the, the southern suburbs is where we're seeing the most growth. Uh, so with a four and a half percent increase, that's about that equates to about 1.2 billion dollars in value, increased value. So it allows us to recover about a third of what we had lost. So where we're seeing that the biggest increase or the most growth is in places like Kettering would be where we're seeing the most. Kettering, Washington Township, Centerville, Oakwood, uh, and then Miami Township and Miamisburg. Uh, these are the places where the, the market's hot. About 50% of the sales we've had in the last three years have been in those communities, um, and, and the prices are up in those communities. And so that is what's really causing us to, because that's what we do. We're trying to estimate the market value of, of people's property based upon uh, recent sales. And uh, so that's what we're seeing, and that's where we're seeing most of the growth. About 70% of the growth is in those six communities uh, south of Dayton. Wow. Now. If a consumer has a, a uh, differing opinion on your estimate, mm -hmm. how would they go about uh, addressing that that, uh, that concern? One of the things we, we've done and, and, and had a uh, one thing that I've kind of pushed as a, since I've been in the auditor's office is to allow people to, to participate in this process and to be as open and as transparent as we possibly can. Um, so when we uh, released these values uh, uh, back in July, uh, we sent notices to property owners informing them of what their, at this point these values are tentative, uh, what the tentative new value on their, on their property would be, uh, and told them if they would like to discuss that or they had questions or they disagreed. Uh, we gave them opportunities to, to call us and um, uh, meet with us. They can meet with us one-on-one -on -one and talk about what, the, what their opinion of the value is and, and uh, you know, why they think it should be something different than, than we think it is. Uh, and then we have what we, we call these an informal review process. So we've been holding informal reviews with property owners uh, since we started in August and uh, we're going to go in through uh, September. Uh, in fact, at 15 locations around the county, we try to make it convenient and accessible to people. What we ask people to do is, uh, is uh, call and make an appointment. And uh, that, that number is 225-5096. Uh, and we're still we're still making appointments. We're still still doing that in the process of doing that, because we've tried it in the past uh, just to have open days and people just show up. And what really happens at that point is is people end up having to wait a long a period of time, and, and that doesn't necessarily make them very happy. So it really works out better if they can call us. Uh, that's our property owners hotline two two five five zero nine six. If they can call us and schedule an appointment. It makes better use of their time, and and I think it works it works better for everyone. Well, thank you, Auditor, for joining us today here on Open House. We appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for tuning in, and see you next time on Open House.